This is Liquid News and these are tonight's headlining stories. I'm in heaven with my guy, Madonna's getting married. I'm in heaven too, Charlie meets the angels, we're live in Leicester Square. And I've been in court, Miss Church agrees a hefty donation to her sacked manager. Hello, I'm Vanessa Feltz. After months of denials and a media runaround worthy of the Queen of Pop, Madonna has today confirmed she's getting hitched. The material girl says she'll wed her Brit beau Guy Ritchie at some point next year. The star also says she wants to settle down permanently in the UK. Alex Stanger gets into the wedding groove for Liquid News. Move over, Catherine and Michael. The wedding of the decade's about to take place. After what seems like a lifetime of speculation, Madonna's finally confirmed Guy's more than a passing fancy. Are you and Guy really getting married? Well, um, we've certainly discussed it, but we haven't made any formal plans. In a Sun exclusive, the material girls admitted Mr. Ritchie will become her permanent guy next year. Apart from him, the mum of two's love of all things British stretches to the UK schools, pubs, stout and houses, which is thrilling news for many an estate agent here in Notting Hill. I love London and yes, I recorded my album here, so it means a lot to me to record here, to, to perform here. According to the newspaper reports, I think I bought about 10 houses here. I'm looking. The couple first got it together after being introduced to one another by Sting's wife, Trudy Styler. Following a brief split, they patched up their differences and were spotted out and about in London last November. The Brit media frenzy launched by having an American megastar permanently in its midst. Cox next Tuesday. My top showbiz guests tonight, meanwhile, are the man who put the red into dead, fashion designer Wayne Hemingway, and Strangler's frontman Jean-Jacques Burnell, who's currently enjoying life as a successful solo artist. Hello, chaps. Hiya. Good to see you. Do you hold up much hopes for Madonna living happily ever after with Guy Ritchie? I think he's done well, hasn't he? He's done well for himself. <laughs> you think the lad done good? Lad, lad's done good. I mean, yeah. he, she's got that kind of... She, she's able to move from cool thing to cool thing. She's got that kind of ability to kind of know what's going to be trendy next and, and link up with the right people. And he's kind of stuck in that groove with that, you know, doing the same old films. And that'll help him along, I think. But what is it him. about him that turns her on? Apparently now her favourite tipple is Guinness. You know, she hangs around local pubs in Dockland. I mean, what the heck is going on? Well, she's on always like England. She's always like London. Yeah. And I think, you know, he's, he's kind of the uh, London type gangster, but he's not really a gangster. He's quite posh. But he's but... actually most sort of upper middle class public yeah. school boy, isn't he? Yeah. What do you make of this? He's liaison? funny. I think it's wonderful that um, two young people can find love. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, can uh, we just take a pause to puke at this point? Yeah, Sorry, vomit. Wonder... Vomit is seeping over the desk <laughs> here. Over my head. Vomit and nausea. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm just um, intrigued by whether... Uh, do prenuptial contracts, uh, are they valid in, in Britain? They're not that yet valid in Britain, I don't think, although they stand up. I wish I'd had one, my God, I really Because she must be worth, like, half a million pounds or something, wasn't Ooh, she? Oh, a good two and six pence, yeah. I would think. What do you think of this T-shirt thing, though, where she wears a T-shirt with his film on, he wears a T-shirt with her album, she wears a T-shirt with Britney Spears on? Well, he, he, you know, what's outside going on? here is his, his public relations office, and she's got the same boots on as you. Has she? So it's a very what, similar Dr. thing Martin? to that. <laughs> yeah, they're exactly the same mate. <laughs> All right, oh, really? still to come, Charlie schmoozes with his angels, and Kath and Mike wave Goodbye to hello. It's Liquid Film News. The world's most famous Charlie is in Leicester Square tonight to meet those kick-ass angels face to face. The Prince of Wales has chosen the high-action chick flick for a royal premiere to raise lots of lovely tongue tonsillitis manner. Oh, well, you know Drew Barrymore. She's still a bit of a wild chick at heart, and this is her man. She's no, made no pretense about it. Tom Green, she's had him um, on board in the film, so, you know, there you go. She's <laughs> managed to get a little bit of nepotism. I think I said something there I shouldn't have done, I but think I didn't mean it that way. You said something delightfully Freudian, but what do you think of the film? I mean, is it going to grab us as it did in the 70s? Not that you'd remember the 70s. Um, I loved... I absolutely loved the series. I'm a real big Charlie's Angels fan. Now, you'll be surprised about this. Hollywood actually thought the film wasn't going to do well at all. You know, small series into big screen film, Avengers didn't do well. It has absolutely surprised them. They couldn't get any Hollywood stars on board. Posh Spice and uh, Jerry were actually up for a part, but, you know, that was for the third Angel. Eight weeks into filming, they managed to get Lucy Liu on board. She's not paid as much as the others, but I think that's going to change. They, she may be up for the sequel. The biggest surprise is that it's taken $75 million in the first 10 days. It really has defied all expectation.
So the three little girls who went to the police academy have made it onto the big screen, and despite Hollywood's misgivings, they're set to kick butt at the box office. Do you think... Have a lovely evening. Bye-bye. What, what do you think? I mean, Charlie's Angels now? Recreated? I, I think it's a shame when they take these things that are iconic and, and people remember them and they've got a place in history and then they kind of ruin them with modern versions and people... It ruins everything and it kind of puts all the past into something that we don't want to remember. So I think it's a shame. To, just for the sake of money, they could leave... They should leave things like that alone. What do you think? It's a bit of a recycled I, I job that's not really necessary, yeah, I, isn't I, it? I, I didn't like it first time round anyway, but... Uh, that's a matter of opinion, but... Why didn't you like it first time, man? Were I you in any state at that point to know whether you liked it I or was not? In a, yes, I was in a state. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was in a state. How old are you? Uh, 48. Yeah, so, yeah, so okay. a bit older. I was, I'm 39. So I looked down my nose at the, all that. Yeah. I'm so 38, so I've got I was the same 39. memories as yours. So, yeah, so when it was out, you know, you'd really fancy Farrah Fawcett, mate. No, and on all no. those girls, you know, as a teenager, to me, they were like... You no, had to watch it for the too, women. They were too shiny, too... Yeah, but um, you were in your cynical 20s then, weren't you? I was trying to be. Yeah. What about Kate Jackson, the clever one? She wasn't shiny. She was the one you always wished you liked the best, but you couldn't help liking yeah. Farrah the best. They were all gorgeous. And then you look at this and they're not gorgeous. No. And they're not and they haven't got the same style and You're they haven't got a, at me. <laughs> <laughs> and they haven't got a style that you know, you can remember that style and, and you know, for a hairstyle to be called a Farrah Fawcett flick, you not that like you said, none of their hairstyles are gonna remember, none of their clothes are gonna remember. Absolutely. So and they've that, kind of ruined it. Apparently there's one one sort of bit in the film where Cameron Diaz wiggles her bum in front of the camera for a full forty five seconds, and apparently even red blooded males considered this overkill. Yeah, I mean yeah, it's who just, needs it, right? I don't want to go and watch it. So, how come Hollywood put a lot of money into making this movie if they had misgivings? I think Wayne thinks it's they're going to make a lot of money out it's of it. It's just money. They will, they will make money. If they had misgivings, because, I mean, there have been a few others. Uh, uh, the Avengers, I think that bombed. That was a turkey. Yeah, they bombed. Was but Batman they, a bomb? But yeah. they bomb, but they make, they still, even if they only make five million, yeah. they make, they turn a profit, and that's what business is about, isn't it? And you should know, entrepreneur yeah. in our yeah. midst. All right, if you're wondering why Christopher isn't in the hot seat this evening, it's not because he's out hobnobbing with Charlie and his angels, but he is at an equally glamorous shindig, the Royal Television Society Awards, where Liquid News has been nominated for a gong for our top graphics. A snatched photo of Michael Douglas feeding Catherine with his Welsh love spoon has nearly ruined OK's big day. The couple sold their wedding pictures for a million pounds to the magazine, but the night that the owner of OK magazine has bought Express newspapers for a tidy sum. Some publisher Richard Desmond has paid £125 million for titles which include the Daily and Sunday Express and Daily Star. Still ahead, Charlotte's manager sings for his supper and ODB manages to escape the rap. It's music news. Collections all round at the church household tonight after young Charlotte agreed to make a sizeable Christmas donation to her former manager. It's reported she'll cough up around £2 million to Jonathan Shallot to end their bitter court dispute. It's believed her record company Sony Music wanted to stop further publicity in the week the teenage soprano released her third album. At the High Court for Liquid News, the BBC's art correspondent David Silito. After just a day and a half in court, 14-year-old Charlotte Church emerged for an impromptu press conference on the steps after her family decided to a financial settlement with the manager they sacked in January. I'm really happy that we've been able to come to a settlement. I mean, this has been a bit of a horrible year for me and all the rest of my family, and so I'm very happy that it's over, and I'd like to thank my family and my parents in particular for being strong for me and supporting me through everything. Jonathan Charlotte, the man who discovered Charlotte and guided her to worldwide fame and an estimated £10 million fortune, doesn't know how much of those millions he's going to get, but he's reported to be happy with today's outcome. And although an unwelcome interlude to her showbiz life, it didn't stop her last night switching on the Oxford Street Christmas lights. Nevertheless, the family's energies can now be concentrated on promoting. Even though he wears a T-shirt with his name on it, fugitive rapper Old Dirty Bastard dodged the plot to join his band, the Wu-Tang Clan, on stage in New York last night. Police surrounded the venue, but Old Dirty Geezer made it through, telling the crowd, the whole world is after me, so I can't stay long. The rapper then scarfered. He's been on the run since he escaped from a drug rehab centre in LA last month. Martin McCutcheon's perfect moment with long-term boyfriend Jonathan Barnum is well and truly over. The couple separated four weeks ago, hoping they might still patch up their differences, but a spokesman announced they have now split for good. The pair insist it's amicable and not related to recent newspaper reports about Jonathan's allegedly cheating ways. 
Paul McCartney's come top in a who's got the biggest wad poll of musicians. His fortune is around 500 million quid, according to Business Age magazine, who's been sniffing round rock bank balances. A love of flowers means Elton only made it to number two with 156 million. Mix in at three with 145 big ones. And not only is Victoria posh, she's also the richest spice with 24.6 million pounds. Not bad, actually, is it? Can we go back and talk about Michael Douglas? You're desperate his, to talk about Michael Welsh, Douglas. Why? And his Welsh love spoon. What well, do you want to say about well, his Welsh love spoon? Well, I have a French love spoon. spoon. Yeah, but that's that's all right because yours is naturally with you. But for him do you to want go to show and, me? Yeah, for him to go and get one grafted on from problem. Wales, you know, it's quite it's quite a, a sick thing to do, isn't it? And <laughs> is this the first time there's ever been a graft of that kind? It's, of it's probably works? it's probably not the first graft he's had. Do you not reckon? No. I and then there was and then there was this. I put this is the actual thing. Now listen, we're not allowed to show those, but I can read this. It says. This is what happened at the wedding. <clears throat> Bonnie Tyler, born in Swansea, took to the stage and sang her haunting 80s hit, Total Eclipse of the Heart, <laughs> for the 250 guests who then danced till dawn. I wish I was there. Do you? Would yeah. you have liked to have been oh, there? Just imagine dancing to Bonnie Tyler, till dawn. Till dawn, at least till dawn. But yeah. it's like, in the same piece, though, it says that Michael hardly danced. Catherine took to the floor alone. How could the... you not dance if Bonnie Tyler was out? He couldn't dance eclipse. because of his Welsh love yeah. spoon. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you're it's... fixated on yeah. that. Well, I think you're just jealous. I just lo yeah, I, lo no, I just love the term. I wish I could walk around. I wish I had either. one. Yeah, I wish I could claim and the talk same. Welsh to I it. don't know why I have to bring present a show with two fellows, neither of whom has a Welsh love spoon. I feel deeply disappointed about yeah, that, well, thing, quite frankly. You might have to get for one. A French one. Where Sorry. do you buy them? <laughs> I don't know. You better ask Michael Douglas, yeah, I, I will think. Do. All right, my next guest has been the driving force behind one of the most successful bands to emerge from the punk explosion of the 70s. Jean-Jacques Bernal has been the bass player and vocalist with the Stranglers for three decades, as well as a singer in his own right. Samantha Simmons takes a look back at his career for Liquid News. <laughs> Jean-Jacques Bernal was one of the original Men in Black, as the Stranglers became known. The band hit the punk scene in the late 70s, with JJ playing bass guitar and often singing lead vocals. Unlike other punk bands, the Stranglers were never into the safety pins or black plastic bag look, but they did delight in causing chaos. At one student gig, in typical punk fashion, they trashed the set. Guildford University never represented Guildford. We hide to elitist audiences. Although often the driving force behind the band, JJ also launched his first solo album, Euro Man Cometh, in 1979, which was recently re-released. But throughout the 80s, the band came first and enjoyed massive success with hits like Golden Brown and Strange Little Girl. In 1990, though, the lead singer Hugh Cornwell quit the band. The rest of the group decided to carry on without him, but have released little new material since. JJ has been doing a lot of solo work ever since, setting up his own band, The Purple Helmets, and releasing a solo album sung in French. But he's now concentrating on new acoustic material, which will be featured in his December tour. But music journalists beware. JJ once kidnapped a journo who wrote a bad review. And be warned, since then he's learnt karate. Samantha Simmons, BBC News. Oh, very cute you look doing that. May I call you JJ? As she does so intimately if on that film. You can't film? get your mouth around you Jean Jacques. Them. Absolutely. I don't want to get my mouth anywhere near the purple. <laughs> Have you decided here and now to rename them the Welsh Love Spoons? Good for complexion. <laughs> complexion. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> purple <laughs> helmet and Welsh Love Spoons. Yes. The purple helmet. Maybe hyphenated. Welsh. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I mean, is it the big deal to, to, to go solo? I was hobnobbing with Lionel Richie the other day, and he said leaving the Commodores was one of the hardest things of his entire life. It's, um, well, the way I'm doing it, yeah, because I'm doing it acoustically. I'm not hiding behind uh, another band or a loud PA. I'm just doing a, an acoustic six string guitar. Why? It's so um, hard and tough. It's because it's exciting. Is it? And it's, yeah, it is. And it's something that uh, uh, no one knows I can do. Explain why it's exciting. Well, you're, you're completely exposed. I mean, for 20-odd years, I've been hiding behind um, a very loud uh, PA and, uh, you know, with a few colleagues uh, uh, beside me. And now I'm pretty exposed. I'm just playing an acoustic guitar, which I'm not known for. I'm known as a bass player. But uh, a lot of the Strangler songs I actually wrote on six string. And it's just different. You just turn up with your guitar, plug in, and there's a few people. It's great. It's pretty intimate. I can, I can, I can screw up, which I do sometimes. Completely forget where I am or forget my lines, mm. and have a chat, drink another glass of wine, and and do it. It's, it's. I mean, it's not, it's not something that I intend to do for forever. But it's a great 
little it's just a great diversion at the moment. I mean, the legend lives on. Are people amazed when they suddenly see you in your six strings without the band? Are they still wanting you to be that strangler love god that you want? Uh, strangler, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> no, not so much. They're, I mean, they're, they're pretty mature now anyway. So <laughs> they, um, they, they come, I think, because they're in, intrigued. Because, I mean, they've never heard me sing by myself with a six-string guitar. So it's very brave of them, actually. It's brave of you, but, but why are you doing it? Oh, it's brave of me, it's brave of the audience. Brave of to, them and brave yeah. of you too. Um, why? Because I haven't done it and there's very few things now that in this uh, in this business that I haven't done. You've been, and you've been something it. of a, um, a rascal in, in the past. There was one particular incident with a journalist who just disappeared for about five hours because you were... Uh, grabbed him and nabbed him isn't there I mean you know are you still prone to throwing things out of windows well I didn't realize that stuff? kidnapping well <laughs> I didn't realize that kidnapping was illegal I thought I was just <laughs> sort of borrowing him for a few hours you know um, do, do I do that kind of stuff yeah. anymore uh, no probably not no do you miss to be it? honest uh, no I've done, you know I've, I think I've done quite a lot there you know and um, have you ever trashed a hotel room with no would you like to? I've never, never, stayed, never stayed in a hotel. <laughs> That's not true. You're thinking fibber. I've room. never trashed a hotel room. I'm, I, well, no, the night is I young. The too, night yeah. is yet young. This is Wayne's yeah. World, Mr. Hemingway's Guide to Kitsch. It's Liquid Life. His celebration of kitsch art. But actually, do you like it to be called that? No, no you don't. He hates it. it being called because, that. I mean, if, if kitsch hadn't become a derogatory term, people use it as a put down now. But like saying, so using a put down on the art that my nan collected and my nan had around her house would be not very nice. I think it, what, what I treat it as, it's a celebration of, of the art that we have, as, as a public, as British public, have bought over the last 30 years. Okay, well and let's have a look at, at well, some, some of the examples. Yes, we have. Now, talk, talk us through that one. Well, that's, that's <laughs> see-through top as well. I've got a see-through yeah. top. I've got lots of long hair covering that, actually, though. <laughs> she has got a see-through top on. Just tell us what gadgets you've got here. Okay, it's expensive Christmas toys for uh, people who like their gadgets this week. We've got... Yeah. PlayStation 2, long awaited. We've got um, a MP3 jukebox which can hold 150 CDs worth of music and a very lovely. Tell uh, me about the PlayStation radio. 2. Now, PlayStation 2, mm. this has been put back and put back and put back and it's finally coming. Um, you can buy it um, up until the 24th of November, put your pre order in, it'll be delivered by Christmas. Blow your socks off. All Absolutely right. amazing. Thanks very much indeed. Is that a Welsh love spoon? I think that's it. That, oh, next question, what's that one there then? Is that a Welsh love spoon Wayne wants to know? A Welsh love spoon? No, it's a very lovely um, digital radio. Basically, if you don't want to fork out 600 quid for a dedicated digital radio, then you can attach one of these to your PC instead and you can pick up those digital radio signals. All right, let's have the next one, but quickly. And this is 150 CDs on one MP3 oh player. God, that's really good. You won't get bored. You can't jog with it, a bit heavy. But 150 brilliant CDs, for, that's completely fantastic. For going on holiday. Yeah, OK, excellent. So which one would you choose? Um, I've already got my order in for PlayStation, I have to say. Wayne? I would choose the Welsh Love Spoon. <laughs> you might choose a Welsh Love <laughs> Spoon. Which would you choose, JJ? PlayStation, definitely. PlayStation definitely. It's Why? Because I don't know how to play them, so I'd like to try. I've got the faintest oh, idea how to play them. Thank you very much, everybody. That's it from us. And if it's a football festival, after tune in to 45 minutes right here on Refreshing Choice tomorrow night at eight. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.